What's happening everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam and this is Van City Audi. We're back at Rider Performance to do the integrated engineering high pressure fuel pump install. We weren't going to do this install right away, to be completely real with you guys. I was going to run the integrated engineering dual pulley 91 octane file as well as their 93 octane file on the stock high pressure fuel pump. But as I stress in all of my videos, I log the crap out of my car. Once we did the dual pulley upgrade and we went to that 93 octane file, I went out and did some logging. The boost looked phenomenal, the timing looked phenomenal, but my high pressure fuel pump duty cycle was really, really high. So I did a couple more logs, I even downgraded the tune to a 91 octane file and I was still having extremely high duty cycles with my uh, high pressure fuel pump, the OEM one. So we grabbed the integrated engineering upgraded one and we're gonna install it today and I'm gonna get out there and do some more data logs. And what I'll do is I'll share with you the logs that I did previously where I'm seeing a really high duty cycle. And then we hope, we really hope, <laughs> that by installing the upgraded pump from integrated engineering, we get rid of that excessive duty cycle and it drops it down to a much more reasonable level and we know that it is running properly. So I'll let Kyle get to the install and then we'll get back out there and we'll do some data logs and I'll show you the before and the after effect of installing this high pressure fuel pump from integrated engineering. Before we get to the install, let's go over the log that I took utilizing the OEM high pressure fuel pump on a dual pulley 91 octane file while using 17% ethanol. We see 65% duty cycle at 2100 RPM. It ramps all the way up to 90% duty cycle at 5000 RPM before it crashes to zero for some reason at 5200. It then spikes back up to 91.9% and it slowly creeps all the way up to 99.99% duty cycle at 6000 RPM. It carries that through up to 6600 RPM before it drops down. So now that you guys are able to see just how high that duty cycle is, let's get to the install. This is the upgraded high pressure fuel pump from Integrated Engineering. This thing looks like a badass pump, super solid, heavy piece. So he's gonna toss this in and hope that we can get that duty cycle down and in the long run, be able to also support an E40 dual pulley tune from Integrated Engineering as well few lines, few bolts, and we'll get it swapped over to the new pump. There are the units side by side. This is the upgraded one that still needs to go in, and that is the OEM piece that we took out. Just a couple more things we need to do to get it installed. This is what it looks like with it completely removed from the vehicle. We'll get that swapped over and tossed in. So the three things we switched over from the OEM pump to this upgraded pump is the pressure sensor and these two fittings. So now that those have been swapped over, he's able to install it. Nice, quick, and painless install from Kyle. Took only about 15 minutes, popped it on. Now we're all said and done. Intake needs to go back on, and then we can get back out there and log. Install's all wrapped up. You can see it tucked in down there. Air intake is back on. Thank you very much to Kyle for the install. Now to head out there, do a data log, and see if we've fixed the problem with that high pressure fuel pump showing an extremely high duty cycle. So I've got my power link cable connected. I'm in third gear around 2100 RPM, manual mode, full foot to the floor without pushing through the kick down to achieve this full log of third gear and check to see if this high pressure fuel pump install worked. Feels healthy. Woo -hoo -hoo. It's all it takes now to review the logs. 
Here's a log of that run utilizing the exact same tank of gas E17 blend dual pulley 91 octane file. I see 59.55% duty cycle at 2400 RPM and as you can see it drops and it goes up a bit but ever so slightly. There are no crazy increases. There's no crashing to zero. It is maintaining the fuel pressure. It is maintaining the demand that it sees and the highest that we see is at 5700 rpm at 64 percent duty cycle this is what a healthy high pressure fuel pump should look like and i now know that my fuel pressure demands are being met with ease what a perfect example of how important it is to data log your b8s4 whenever you do modifications and regularly to make sure your car is running as it's supposed to I was seeing 99.99% duty cycle on that high pressure fuel pump, my OEM pump. I upgraded to the integrated engineering high pressure fuel pump. It is dropped down to just shy of 65%. What a huge improvement. I can now comfortably push this car's limits and put my foot through the floor and make sure that I am enjoying it as much as I can, knowing that my fuel pressure is where it should be and that the high pressure fuel pump is working like it is supposed to. So now I gotta get to the track. Now I gotta see what this thing is capable of with the dual pulley 93 octane file from Integrated Engineering. What do you guys think I'm gonna be able to run? I accomplished an 11.4 at 120 miles an hour with the single pulley E30 file. Do you guys think I'm going to go faster? You think I'm going to go slower? Well, before we get to the track, I'm going to actually head back to Racing Greed to do a dyno for you guys so you can see exactly how much power I'm making on this setup. Now that I know that my fuel pump is working as it's intended, I'm okay to get on the dyno and do back-to-back -back runs, get this thing up to temp and get it ripping to find out how much power it makes, not only with the 93 octane tune, but also with the 91 octane tune before I get to the track and see what this car can accomplish with this dual pulley setup. I hope this video was an eye-opener for those people that beg on their S4s and never data log their car. I could not feel that that high pressure fuel pump wasn't performing well. The only way I was able to tell was because I data logged the car. So I'm hoping that you guys start doing that more. In the description below, I'll actually put a link to the video that I've already done explaining how to data log your B8S4 utilizing VCDS or VAGCOM, same thing, just different name, or with the PowerLink system from Integrated Engineering like I use. Thank you all very much for watching and until next time guys, take care.